Let's get right to business here. Holly Leaf is awesome. Throughout the power of three, Holly Leaf proves over and over again that she is the glue holding Lion Blaze and Jay Feather together. And she's the first character since Firestar that I felt was a really relatable and ideological main character. What do I mean by ideological? Holly Leaf, like Firestar, is always struggling with her beliefs and how to act according to them. Her main conflict throughout the Power of Three is her own beliefs, and learning to properly react when something doesn't match it. Holly Leaf asks herself constantly if what she's doing is right, and also holds others to her standard of living a moral life. This kind of conflict parallels so well with Firestar, but from a new perspective of a character who is expected to do great things because of her parentage, unlike Firestar, who no one expected to be anything. Holly Leaf is hyper aware of morality and her own responsibilities, and has a strong sense of justice that doesn't just help her, but helps the clans as well. Like I said, this kind of strong, ideologically minded main character is a good fit for these kinds of books, where the politics of clan life play a large role, and the reality of everyone having legitimate reasons for fighting each other makes it hard to know who is in the right. Firestar was the first main character like this, and like I said, it was great to have Holly Leaf fill that void after so long without it. Brambleclaw only sort of filled this role, but a lot of his daddy issues and insecurities aren't something that every reader is going to connect with, myself included, and a lot of Brambleclaw's ambitions, despite what he keeps telling himself, are purely for his own benefit. Brambleclaw also suffers from something I'll be coming back to, being a reactive protagonist instead of a proactive one. And the same can be said about Leafpool and Squirrelflight. I could talk a whole lot more about the new prophecy in general and its main characters. Anyway though, I would have loved for Brambleclaw's arc in the second series to have just concluded with him learning to be content as a warrior, and him finding his own self-worth and happiness in that. But no, Firestar instead shows his thanks for not killing him by letting Brambleclaw remain deputy of ThunderClan, and thus Brambleclaw's self-worth is really only validified by his position. And then you get to Power of Three's main characters, Hollyleaf, Jayfeather, and Lionblaze, who all bring their own flair to the narrative. Jayfeather is a dick, and even though he's my personal favorite out of the three, his character is purposefully foilistic to the normal warrior's protagonist, which is great. And then there's Lion Blaze, who is an odd choice of a main character in my opinion, because while he's not as self-serving as Jayfeather, he's also just, how to put this, kind of dull. Lion Blaze doesn't have Holly Leaf's cunning mind or Jayfeather's amusing quips. He's obsessed with his talent in fighting, but other than that, Lion Blaze is a pretty normal dude who happens to pack a lot of heat. I will admit he gets better later on in Omen of the Stars. But especially in Power of Three, he just comes off as kind of bland. But a story about the Everyman is appealing to a lot of people, so I understand why people like him. I don't hate Lion Blaze either, for the record. It's just that he's a strange choice because he lacks the character and personality that Jay Feather and Holly Leaf bring to the table. Which, honestly, now that I think about it, might be exactly why he's there. But this all brings me back to Holly Leaf. We can gripe all we want about how silly it was to kill Hollyleaf because the Urns couldn't think of a power for her, and then drag the story over another six book arc, but I think what really disappoints me about the whole thing is the waste of Hollyleaf's potential. Even though Hollyleaf might not have had a power, she was a moral compass and a leader to many of Jay Feather and Lion Blaze's adventures. When Hollyleaf was gone and replaced with Dovewing, the group lost the dynamic to get anything done. Neither Jayfeather nor Lionblaze had any real ambition to do anything other than wait for the prophecy to play out, and Dovewing definitely didn't fill that void either. Now, I don't want to turn this into negative Nancy time and tell the Urns how to write their own story, because honestly, they do a fantastic job most of the time. But I can't help but think that axing off Hollyleaf's character is a cause for a lot of the problems in Power of Three and Omen of the Stars. So that leaves us to ask what to do with Holly Leaf's character once we know that she's not one of the three anymore. Because, you see guys, we can complain all we want about how some things played out, but I've always kind of had a mindset that if you don't know how you could potentially fix the problem, you shouldn't be the one complaining about it either. So, 
here's some possible solutions to what they could have done with Holly Leaf's character instead of killing her. First of all, they could have just done nothing. Just because Holly Leaf isn't special doesn't mean she needed to die. Like I said, Holly Leaf was the only one with the moral compass, and for the record, she got shit done. Unlike our other protagonists who were reactive, Holly Leaf was proactive. After all, that's why out of the three of them, Holly Leaf was the one to kill Ashfur. Not spiteful Jay Feather, although who says he wouldn't if he could have, but still, he didn't. Or OP Lion Blaze, but get shit done, Holly Leaf. And good for her, too, because Ashfur is such a piece of fox dung. Rick, Summer? Keeping Hollyleaf around means you could still have the backbone and the brains of the group. And now you get to see how Hollyleaf faces the consequences of her actions and how she reacts to finding out that she's not one of the three. Which might sound like Ivy Pool's arc, but unlike Ivy Pool, their stories could parallel each other. And while Hollyleaf starts at her lowest point ever, she can overcome her jealousy and figures out her place in the world, becoming more than just one of the three. Ivy Pool, on the other hand, struggles and just can't shake her jealousy, and Holly Leaf is the one that Ivy Pool can confide in. Or, for a darker turn for all you edgy folks out there, Holly Leaf's jealousy does get the best of her. And it's her jealousy that leads Ivy Pool down the path to the dark forest. Holly Leaf becomes the grander villain that Omen of the Stars was missing, and rises to power right under everyone's noses. And the three realize that they have to become proactive and do something about Hollyleaf before it's too late. Either of these options would have fit well with Hollyleaf's character arc, and could have been a better payoff in the story in general. Right from the beginning of the site, I could have sworn that Hollyleaf was going to become ThunderClan's deputy someday. And her character really seemed to point in that direction. And not in the more superficial way, like Brambleclaw, who just really wanted to be deputy. Hollyleaf felt like a natural leader who would rise to the occasion like Firestar did. So it was really disappointing to see her go crazy and then get killed, only to come back and get killed again. But no, she does die, and thus her whole arc kind of feels like a waste of time. Around Long Shadows, Holly Leaf's arc starts to make a drastic change from being about a good warrior and living up to her own high expectations of herself, and more about her insecurities of what others think about her, which leads to her downfall. As a result, her original arc is pretty much overshadowed completely by this new one. And that's a shame, because in hindsight, I think I liked where her first arc was going more than what she ended up becoming. I really hoped that when she came back in The Forgotten Warrior, that she was finally going to live up to all that foreshadowing and become the deputy and eventual leader of ThunderClan, despite her past transgressions. This would obviously change a lot of the plot of Omen of the Stars, and I'm in no way saying this would have fixed everything, but Omen of the Stars really hurt from not having a proactive protagonist around to kick Jayfeather and Lion Blaze's butts into gear and actually do something. I'll also be the first to admit that I need to reread Omen of the Stars, since it's been a long time and I might be overlooking something. And, for the record, I wouldn't change the books for anything, but seeing alternate timelines where Hollyleaf stuck around would certainly be interesting. Who even is ThunderClan's deputy now? Squirrel Flight? Oh, come on! Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Did you notice the lack of Hollyleaf like I did in Omen of the Stars? Speaking of Warriors AUs, though, here's a plug to Kush Fuddle and her comic, Twin Shadows, which is an awesome comic that explores a Warriors AU where Firestar never joins ThunderClan and remains Kitty Pet. It's done traditionally in markers, and it's so amazing. Her colors and character designs are worth looking at alone, but the story is actually really interesting as well. Go check it out! And, of course, if you like this video, I've got more on my channel you should check out too, like why you shouldn't want a Warriors movie. And if you're interested in getting some cool art from me, I take commissions and have a Redbubble account. Links in the description.